What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm gonna be talking about the overall market and breaks on what's going on with the stocks right now, what levels to watch for, and some very important updates about Tesla, the QQQ, and other tickers out there. Before I say anything, let me just mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, take none of this as financial advice. I would also appreciate it if you guys smashed the like button. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And finally, don't forget about the Moomoo link, which is down below in the description. Put in 100 bucks and you're guaranteed up to five free stocks plus $100 in cash as a reward. Now let's break down these levels, what on earth is going on. So yesterday when it came to the market, uh, we were going to see the, a bit of a pullback in this move right here. We got the pullback in the very beginning of the morning, but this ended up being a fake out and the, the technicals ended up flipping. And this was once again a trap set by the market makers. So what I did is I released this video immediately as soon as I saw it back when SPY was in the high 426s to almost 427. SPY was down there, right, in the morning, and I released this video. There's a squeeze coming. The market's going to get a big pump. And I predicted very soon SPY would get to 429. I predicted the QQQ would break 352. I told you Tesla's going to fly into the 230s. Uh, if it broke 230, you're going to be watching 233. And all of those came true almost exactly. Now, the question is, could the market keep this up for tomorrow? Well, that's going to depend on many different factors. Uh, we have a relatively high amount of puts expiring, so the market makers are incentivized to hold the market up. But you have to watch for confirmation because so far, SPY is still range-bound. The QQQ has a different uh, type of price action, but SPY is still stuck in this range. It hasn't really broken in either direction just yet. But we did get a nice bounce, and I did call that. So hopefully, if you guys took... Uh, you know any positions not that i'm giving any financial advice but hopefully if you guys like uh watch the video you guys got some good insights on it but i want to break down something else that's very important for tomorrow right before the market closes so we're just about to enter power hour and for now the market is still looking very strong no true signs of a big rejection as of right now and i want to break down something else as i mentioned before lots of puts are expiring and finally, uh, we have a very, very big report that's coming out tomorrow morning. I'm not sure if the market's going to get a big reaction. This is known as the World Agriculture Supply and Demand Estimates. Uh, the market may get a response to this. I'm not too sure about this. I mean, this is coming out tomorrow once again at 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, which is about 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Uh, this is important for the economy as a whole, the agricultural markets, the livelihoods of everyday people, looking at supply and demand estimates for agriculture. It's going to be coming out to give us forecasts of supply and use of the U.S. world wheat, rice, grains, and a bunch of other things like that. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, that's coming out for tomorrow. I just wanted to inform you. And if anything, my profit-taking level would have been around 429. Uh, that's where I took profits already. And, you know, so far... Even though the market's looking strong, I'm still completely fine with that because a crazy money was made off this jump today. I called this out. You guys had the opportunity. Uh, but by the way, not giving financial advice, I'm just saying. Uh, anyways, when it comes to the market, now I want to break down something important. SPY is still range bound. Okay, if you want to turn very bullish, it needs to break 429.2, 429.62, and then 430. Break 430, hypothetically, let's just, you know, let's, let's just speak in... Uh, about that type of situation if it breaks 430 you're going to be watching it test the 431s 431.22 to 431.75 if it breaks that 433 is where we have some resistance because we got some rejections here historically and where did all these numbers come from well i'm using many different methods i'm looking at fibonacci retracement zones i'm looking at uh as well many rejection zones areas where the stock historically had resistance, right? I basically zoom out and look left on the chart at historical data way back there. And I simultaneously look at, I use other methods too to calculate them, but uh, primarily most of this comes from historical data and this, this has been fairly accurate. For example, yesterday I told you guys, watch 429.62. That's where SPY got rejected before and that's exactly where it rejected the high yesterday. So once again, Looking at historical data is a good way of looking at it, also Fibonacci levels. Uh, but for now, let me just note that 433 is going to be the next major resistance if we break 431. Then we have the 435.61 area. I just wanted to note those just in case and just to be safe. Uh, also, things could change a lot going into next week since we have so much data. This is more relevant now for Tesla. And, and by the way, before I talk about Tesla for SPY, uh, if it comes down, you have to watch for support at 428.5. 427.5, watch the 50 EMA, which is currently at 427.2. Uh, 4, uh, 426 flat is still major, major support. 
We haven't broken this. If it breaks that, it's going to turn bearish. So far, no sign of it breaking that, not even close to it right now. Just want to note, just to be safe, guys, that this is still valid. Uh, just so that you are well aware, especially going into tomorrow, I should be able to re record another video later on, talk more about different tickers like NVIDIA. But I also wanted to talk about Tesla and break down something very important about it. That's why I'm still talking about these levels. So I updated my charts and looked at historical data. Uh, and now I have my chart updated for which, which levels to watch for. Because Tesla broke 230, which is a very strong sign. Tesla is still looking bullish on the one hour time frame, but it's fighting this resistance between... It's basically very close to this 233 range, 233.5 around there to about 232.4 or something. It's basically this range right over here, very close to 233. Tesla is fighting back and forth and back and forth, trying to break, still making these highs, a clean break above this 233.5 resistance. And this thing has the potential to reach the next major level. There's going to be some resistance at 235, but 236 is going to be the more strong resistance. So I just want to make that clear. Once we get a clean break, if it does break in a very strong manner, a very big break is what I'm talking about. You're going to be watching 236 on Tesla. Could come all the way up there. If Tesla breaks down, there's some support now at the 5 EMA at 231.76. And then if that fails us, 230 is going to come again. And that was a very important level. So watch these levels on Tesla, by the way, for the final hour. Uh, so far, it's looking very nice. And then for the QQQ, my prediction on the QQQ, it was this thing was going to break 352. And I told you this back when it was at the 349s in the morning. I released the video early. I'm, I'm sure some of you saw it. I know not everyone saw it because, once again, it was a very early update. It wasn't really uh, released at a time in which most people will, will be watching. But for those who caught it, you had a big opportunity to make crazy, crazy money. It, it just flew to the upside. I called the move and this could have been helpful for you guys. But anyways, not financial advice, by the way. Now we're going to be looking at these levels. So remember how historically 354 to 353 was support. Now it's going to be fighting 353, the zone over there as resistance. And there's an entire chop zone between 353 to 354. So this entire zone up here is going to be acting as resistance. Uh, Basically, I'm going to be watching this entire zone and it's turned more bullish. It needs to break and hold 354. If it manages to do that, it could continue going to like 355.46 and then break and hold that. There's going to be 356 and 357.5. Just wanted to update you guys on the QQQ's numbers. If the QQQ breaks down, right, in the opposite direction, you're going to be watching 352. If that breaks, the next important support is going to be in the 350 zone. That breaks 349 to 350 has some support. Then we have all the way down here back to the 347.9 area. The 200 EMA is around, what is this, 347 all the way down there. So this is looking really weak before, but it crossed over in the pre market, formed this nice divergence, and started to pump. And the moment I saw this, I called the move and it happened. Now, the technicals could flip very fast depending on data. Initial jobless claims came out and, you know, the market started holding up nicely, then started to pump off of it. And once again, the market's holding up because of all the puts out there. A lot of people started shorting the moment they saw the market drop like this, especially on SPY. We saw insane amounts of net put premiums. After that, market makers came out and caused as much pain as possible to the zero data expiration options, which is adding to volatility. And simultaneously, because of tomorrow, since we have so many puts expiring. All right, so just watch these levels. Uh, I should be able to release another video later on today, though. Uh, please remain calm, cool, and collected. The market's holding up nicely. We're in power hour now. And do what you have to do. Thank you all for listening. Have a great day. And get ready for the data for tomorrow. I mean, we have more important agricultural supply and demand data coming out. So thank you. I'll see you guys later on. And peace out.